Welcome to the Murphy, Sam, and Jody After the Show podcast, and we want to do something special today for those who are dealing with the aftermath of Hurricane Helene. And even if you're not, I think this will be relevant because everybody either knows someone or has experienced something, you know, that has been the wrath of Mother Nature. And, you know... It splits your life. Mm -hmm. This one is just really mind-blowing to me because, you know, Florida obviously took the first hit. And that's where you, and when you hear about hurricanes, that's what you're used to hearing about is the coastal surge and the high winds, landfall. you know, and, and right at landfall. And that's, you know, where the most destruction is. And obviously that's not the case with this storm. It's horrible everywhere. It was horrible at landfall. It was horrible as it, you know, plowed across Georgia and into the Carolinas and then kind of just sat there over Tennessee, you know, dropping rain in all those areas. And so the flooding between the trees and the flooding it, you just have this big swath of Southeast America, Southeast United States, that is traumatized by this storm. Well, you know, still weren't ready for it because they're used to, uh, the, the, these areas are used to the storms. When, by the time they reach that area, they're weakened. Weakened. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Dissipated a bit. Well, this one was moving so fast and so strong that that's, mm -hmm. you know, it was able to get in there farther it's still strengthy strengthened we um have lived through many hurricanes and so we're going to share with you uh in this podcast some of our aftermath takeaways there are always lessons to be learned from any you can you learn every single time um but we've asked you to check in with us on facebook and instagram yeah. where are you how are you and you really have come through stacy sent this we are in the panhandle of florida we were spared but the big bend took the hit it was the third storm in 13 months there, sending prayers for all in the Carolinas and Georgia. Hurricanes get, give us major anxiety since Michael in 2018. Tammy says, Vail, North Carolina. We have trees down, and they're saying a week before power's back. Yeah. That's okay. We still have a home. So many around us don't. Uh, it's tough for our family. We're all accounted for. Mm -hmm. That is the number one to me. That is the scariest thing to not know where your people are. Yeah. And you know that's still a situation in parts of the Carolinas where people still don't haven't well, heard from family. And so, and and that's it, it, in the Carolinas, in Tennessee, in the Asheville area, it, but even you know through Georgia, where you still don't have electricity. Uh, and if, if you don't have electricity, you can't charge your phone. You know, right. there are people you, who are finding places that have Wi-Fi and places to plug in phones and that sort of thing. But um, you know, power is still not on. In fact. The you know, our show is actually mm -hmm. heard on a couple of radio stations that are still off the air right now mm -hmm. in uh, in portions of central Georgia and uh, you know the Augusta, the Augusta area especially which was you know really hit hard by some of those big winds. I don't think the winds were less than ninety miles an hour when it reached that far in them, which is yeah. so That's different. That's terrifying. Than Terrified of wind. Right. Tamara said, Greenville, South Carolina, originally from Miami, Florida, feeling helpless, was so not prepared for this hurricane. Having lived in Florida, you know in advance and prepare in May for the season. Yeah. But waking up to the storm was scary. It's Monday and still no power, maybe Friday, she's saying. Luckily, no damage to my house. My job has, ele has electricity, so I had to go to work today. Very strange. Uh, so I better, I'll better prepare for winter just in case this happens with ice or snow. Hope everyone is safe and sound. My uh, son, Will, lives in Columbia. And? He and his wife. And I, had, whenever these things start going his way, because there was one earlier this season, it's like, hey, are you all ready? And it, oh, yeah, we're just expecting this. And that's what I got this time. Yeah, we're just expecting some rain. And, and then when it hit, it took a while to get in touch with him afterwards. And he even sent the text, like, I don't even know if y'all are getting this because Aww. we don't have data. We don't have he electricity. Knows, yeah. But, you know, we all got it. We stayed in touch. They lost power for a little while. They got it back. They lost it again. And I think they have it back now again. But they, luckily, their house was spared. They had mm -hmm. lost a lot of tree branches all over the place. He was showing us video. But they were spared. But it's like nothing they've ever seen there. Mm -hmm. Nothing they've expected. Correct. This is going to be the one that splits the lives of so many people. We've already talked about Chimney Rock, North Carolina. We're going to get mm -hmm. to that more later. Um Michelle says, I'm in Newberry, South Carolina, still without power. And as we have a well, no water. So I have to go mm. into town to get water for flushing. No property damage. So that was good. Hoping electricity comes back on soon. Um, yeah, I know Augusta had, uh, I don't know if they've gotten it back yet, but I know they have water distribution sites set up uh, right now, or they're setting more up today because 
what not only was the power cut but also the water was affected as well you think it, you think about people with little children with babies mm-hmm. it's just such a de- it's it's devastation it's like a war zone yeah. Uh, Penny says this, Banner Elk, North Carolina, complete devastation in most areas, many without power, water, etc. No words can describe this. However, I have seen communities rally together and combine resources to get things done. Never underestimate the good a man and a chainsaw can do. <laughs> please, play, please pray for us in western North Carolina. Long road ahead. There For are, sure, Penny. There are always those, and I call it heroes because everybody really becomes a hero if they're able Helpers. to do it in, in good health to do that. Yes, people do pull together. And, you know, it's this shows you how when we go about our day to day lives and we, and I would say we take it for granted, but we just don't think about the whole infrastructure of everything. That when mm-hmm. power goes and trees fall and you don't have access, then fuel can't get to gas stations, yeah. food can't get to grocery stores, or if the grocery stores don't have electricity or a generator at all, you know, food goes bad. And so it, it's, it becomes a compound problem. And that's why it's so good to see people who literally will – pack up their cars and drive hundreds of miles into those areas to help others. Speaking of it, Angie said, Clarksville, Florida, we fared well, lots of rain. We were blessed this time. We were hit head on by Hurricane Michael six years ago, and we are still recovering. Mm. Be positive and know that help is on its way. Communities like mine are gathering supplies now. That's the thing I can remember in storms of the past. And honestly, Murphy, I've blocked some of them out. I remember Katrina well and things like that, but I've blocked some of them out. I can't even tell you the names, but I remember the situations because we had little kids. Mm -hmm. I can remember uh, neighbors of ours just needing deodorant. Like I know a lady who needed toothpaste and toothbrushes. And then another neighbor down the street from my mom after she, they went through a horrific flood. And they were, my mom had like six feet of water in her home due to a storm. Um, that there were uh, people in the neighborhood who just needed pet food mm-hmm. because they lost everything. Mm-hmm. And they were okay with all the donations coming in and people bringing food in and bringing water in and knowing where to go to get that. But they couldn't find any pet food. For their pets that they still luckily felt, they felt lucky to still have. Right. Like when you talk about basic human needs in the hardest hit areas, it's basic human needs. It's water. It's somewhere to plug in to charge your device. Yeah. And with that device, hopefully locate members of your, not just family, but your inner circle. Mm-hmm. Like think if, you know, Murphy and Sam couldn't reach each other for two three days or any of us, we would be worried yeah you know you and then your mind goes in all these places all these different places yeah the uh the the flood that affected your mom affected about 150,000 people which is you know a large scale and brings up another thing family, too it's, really. yeah it, yeah brings up you know another thing I've seen some of these posts on on Facebook uh, you know people concerned that the national media doesn't wind up covering and and I think the national media winds up just focusing on the biggest picture that they can show or the biggest story. And sometimes the smaller communities are the ones that really do get left out of the, out of the big stories. But the good news is, I mean, thanks to social media and as long as somebody does have cell service, which that one gets dicey when you start talking about flooding, taking out, you know, cell towers and, you know, cell towers only have generators that run for so long and that sort of thing um, that, uh, you know, people are still able to raise their hands and say, Hey, we need, you know, we need help. Yeah. Tammy said near Asheville, North Carolina, checking in. Our home is okay, but trees and power lines are down everywhere. We finally got cell phone back yesterday. Trying to find ice has been a nightmare. Mm. We drove to South Carolina to get gas and some supplies yesterday and had our first home, first hot meal since Thursday. I know so many others have it way worse, so I'm grateful for what we do have. I've never experienced anything like this. Mm. We need all the help we can get. Please keep praying for us, and thanks for caring. Thank you for checking in, Tammy. I mean, you didn't have to take the time to send that, but, you know, just because, like Murphy is saying, the national media and, and from, from so many people, life goes on, and your life is completely different. It will never be the same. 
there are many of us who cannot look away. Yeah. If we've been through this before, people who've mm-hmm. been through this before cannot look away. And people who do look away, they can't understand it. I would like to say this. We'll continue to share your check-ins and your comments all week long on the show. We just will. It's what's going on, so we're going to share it. But I just want to say this. If you've never been through this before, one of the things that you that I want to say to you, and you may not want to hear it, it's, but it's be patient. Yes. It's breathe in and out and be patient. One of the reasons it takes so long, and it's a complex reason, but it's because um, it takes a long time for power to be restored safely. It does. Trees have to be moved first, and then you have to make sure that those lines aren't hot or well it's a whole process because you know it starts at the main hubs and work that works its way out so it's not really that they can come way out first and turn it on because it hasn't been turned on at the hub right there's a process that they use basically so yeah Mm -hmm. it's gonna you're you're gonna be frustrated but patience is a key word the people that i feel for the most in some of these cases right now um which is devastating and i can't imagine that even having been through this before like in the Asheville area where people are actually isolated because no one can get to them right now Mm -hmm. because roads are blocked and services. It's a lot more than utilities being out. It's so much debris and everything, you know, that, that has to be cleared before those, you know, poles can even go back up. And first priority for first responders is check on people, you know, Mm -hmm. get to, get to houses and make sure that people are okay. And, you know, that's why one thing, if you, if you're wondering what it is that you can do to help as simplistic as this sounds, but, you know, giving to reputable organizations that are designed to provide this kind of, you know, like the Red Cross, for example, Um, Jody and I made a personal donation to the Red Cross, which you can actually specify Helene relief is that you, you know, what you want it to go to. And, you know, these are organizations that their job and role is specializing in triaging these kinds of situation so if you're not in the center of it and want to help that's one way to do it if you are you know in the middle of it and and you are listening to this podcast hopefully this kind of gives you some companionship and you know help you're not alone you're not forgotten you know sometimes it's something it's the things you can never predict someone who's a neighbor of yours who is living two houses down who hasn't had their medicine in four days or needs rescue or needs getting out it is, it's horrible to live through it, but you end up knowing your neighbors in yeah. ways you never thought you could. Right. I mean, there is good that can come out of it. It's just hard to see it and feel it right now. Right. Kathy said, thank you for checking on us. This is the worst thing I've lived through in my life. Many trees cover my patio out back, but thankfully none hit the house. It looks like a war zone on our street. No power uh, going on the fourth day now. Huh. This, sto- this storm seemed to touch every home at least on my block. I do have water. It's hot to sleep at night. Yes. The National Guard came in to help. Yes, thank you, the National Guard. I'm just blessed I didn't get hurt. Lost everything in the fridge, but of course that can be replaced. Um, I can't be. Love you all. That's Kathy. That's a friend thank of ours you, who Kathy. lives outside of Augusta, okay. Augusta, Georgia. Sarah says, upstate South Carolina, no power and lots of trees down on, on roads and houses. Yeah, trees down on houses is so hard to see. And... If it's your home, it's a site you can never forget. Yeah. It is PTSD. Uh, don't expect to have power until late Friday. That's what Sarah's been told. I've heard that a lot from that area, from mm-hmm. the Carolinas, yeah. at least Friday. And that's that's the what they've been told. Um, Kim, Windsor, South Carolina. No power, no physical damage, though. So thankful that my family made it through and are safe. Um, I remember... Um, after Katrina, Sam, you once you knew your parents were okay, your family was okay, you were trying to help people just use, like you were going to um, uh, shelters. We went to, one of, we went to one of the shelters near our house that just, people had been evacuated to <clears throat> because at the time there was a lot of, you know, like somebody, they just put them on buses and got them out of the city and you don't know where your relatives went. If your relative didn't have a phone, you really were in trouble. And you let so, people use your phone. Well, yes, we let them use our phone or it's like, hey, here's a number. Contact my uncle. And we would call him and say, hey, this person is here. Yeah. They're good. They got blah, yeah. blah, blah. We did that a lot. We went on websites that because the Red Cross and others had set up websites for check-ins. Yeah. And we went on there and found people and mentioned that relatives were here. So it, 
I mean, it made me feel good that I was doing what I could do. Even if it's something little, you don't know what it can mean. To me, knowing that a loved one is okay is everything because everything else can be replaced. That's another thing. If you are listening to this and you've never been through anything like this before, know this. Um, May not be what you want to hear right now, but once you do get back to your home, let's say you're away and you go back and you see there's all kinds of damage. Take pictures of it. Mm -hmm. Take as many pictures of it as you can before you start cleanup because, unfortunately, you will have, you will need them. You will need the pictures for insurance reasons. Yeah. And you need to be super, you know, careful of scammers, too, unfortunately. In the aftermath. Just like you have heroes that come from the outside world to help, unfortunately, you have, you know, um, I would I would not really call them entrepreneurial, but that's you know there are there scams. Are, there are reputable reputable people and contractors and others that will come in to try to repair and be helpful and all that kind of thing. But you have to be really cautious about those who are less than you know reputable because unfortunately those people do surface you know it, during times of crisis like this too. Um, they sure do. So you know as of this morning which is what it is 10 o'clock and this is the 30th central time, of central time. Mm-hmm. south carolina is still 750,000 people without power mm-hmm. 570,000 people without power in georgia 456,000 people still without power in north carolina uh, 119,000 still without power in florida and i don't know why tennessee's not on this particular list because it, they're showing up in yellow but there's still a significant amount of outages you know and, and i think some of the destruction in tennessee because it's in that mountain area it's a very Mm -hmm. concentrated area where it's not necessarily well you know thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people but the devastation is unbelievable Mm -hmm. between the landslides and you know the the floods the dam that almost broke in eastern tennessee but somehow managed to survive you know it's it's just been that part has been it's all been horrible to watch, but watching the city of Asheville and its downtown area practically be wiped out is just like, that's nothing I've ever seen before, yeah. you know? And a lot of questions need to be answered, like just, you know, every little thing. How How is everybody? I yeah. mean, if you're, if you're from that area. That's the most important one, right? Yeah. That is the most important one. Jennifer yeah. sent this. Uh, we got hit really hard in Swainsboro, Georgia. We had so yeah. many trees fall. We will be without electricity and water for another two weeks. Oh. That's what they're being told. Yeah. Man, if you can get out then and go somewhere else with family or somewhere, you probably need to do that. Because, you know, living without water and electricity is not something we are built for. Right. You yeah. know, and but, the, you know, the National Guard will be coming in. Mm-hmm. Well, and, you FEMA know, FEMA will be coming in. It's, yeah. I mean, F- FEMA is and, you know, it's, it's, and I'm already seeing the complaints, yes. you know, in, in different cities about that. I think, look, some of these cities weren't equipped for this because it's never happened before. That's not an excuse but you know it, when it, it, what city inland is is preparing for 95 right. mile an hour winds plowing through from a hurricane that far inland really no one um, but you know electrical companies the electric companies all pool their resources together yep. so you, you already have bucket trucks as far mm-hmm. away as california you know headed to the east coast right now so it's going to be a lot more than just your local power company in any of those areas working to repair these lines it's going to be from all over you know people from all over that'll be spending the next several weeks rebuilding um, I do want to share this. Speaking of that, <clears throat> we've been told uh, time and time again after dealing with th- these sorts of storms, when you see a lineman in your neighborhood, let let them work. You know, don't go up and ask them a hundred million questions because they're what they're doing. Not only do they need to focus on that to get power back to you and to everyone else, but it's tedious work. It's not easy. Well, it's work. dangerous work. It's too. dangerous work and it's tedious. Um, and a friend of mine, she posted this too, and. I, I, I kind of lost it because all the your comments are rolling in, and we love that. We love the check-ins. But a friend of mine suggested to anyone who's ever been through this before, yes, you're going to be in it for the long haul. But when she was, uh, it was an aftermath of a storm that we all went through, they noticed that some of the linemen in the areas and the workers were always in the same dirty clothes. Well, they're, they've come from states away, hundreds yeah. of miles away. They've left their families, and they're there. And, yeah. yes, offer them meals when you can, water bottle, something to drink when you can, but don't interrupt them. But she, they even got together, and they offered to um, wash their clothes for them. They would come with just two changes oh, of wow. clothes or something like that. And she was like, okay, so she would – one of her friends would gather the clothes together and wash them overnight because she still had power and she had utilities. 
so she could wash them. And then the ch- the, the drop off point was her front porch, and they would pick them up. And and wow. he, one of the linemen told her it was so fantastic to just put on clean clothes to start the next day, mm-hmm. a long day, and those clothes get filthy, dirty. Some of those some of those linemen have to go through water. Yeah, you know, to well, get to the points they need to be. If you remember, I showed you a, a <laughs> staging area before it even landed. Yes, yeah, Sam. Thousands of trucks, and this this was in Florida, but it's that thousands of trucks. So you realize those guys were there waiting before it started. So this mm-hmm. is, you know, they're gone on a week. They'll yeah. be gone on a week soon. And to wrap this again, I just want to say it. I know it's hard because we live in a right now society and time in our culture where when we want something, we have it right then. You want a bottle of water? You grab it. You want to watch something? You grab it. You want to feel better? You change clothes or whatever. And that's not what the aftermath of a storm is. It, it's patience and helping your neighbors. You might need you might be the one who needs help next. Yeah. Um, And we will continue to be here for you, and we want you to check in with us on Instagram and Facebook. Let us know where you are and how you are. Missed any part of the show? Get it all on the Murphy, Sam, and Jody podcast.